volume. You know, in these emails, you told me that you wanted new, and I said that's fine. And then you were like making, you made certain demands. If I was going to continue to be a part of Funk Volume, like you made certain demands in the emails. Um, you know, one was that Funk Volume Fitness had to go. Uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody. <I> mean, <laughs> Funk Volume Fitness had to go. And just to remind, like, just to let people know, like, Funk Volume Fitness wasn't just something I started just by myself without your blessing. I know, I know. Like, I came to you, I was like, hop, like, I, I'm interested in fitness. And I think this could be a great thing for the label. Again, pulling us out of, like, it's a more regular thing. I know you don't yeah. work out like that, but like, to me, in my mind, like starting Funk Volume Fitness was like the start of potentially getting a Funk Volume Fitness hour in LA Fitness. No, like, you're, I feel you're, like you're, you're I feel right. like I feel like Funk Volume Fitness could have gone, could have scaled up to that eventually. It could have, could have. So that that's how, and it was just something that I know. I know my brother was, you know, trying to yeah, yeah, he's he was super yeah, healthy, he was, yeah, and 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 fit. You know, Dizzy was trying to be more fit. I'm always working out. It just to me, and it was just something I was passionate about. Uh -huh. So yeah. that's so you said Funk Volume Fitness needed to go. Yep. You said that you were getting a new manager, uh -huh. and that the other guys wanted new managers. <laughs> and then you said Swizz could no longer be a part. His name could never. He can't be on in anything. And then I just replied. I was like, "Look, you getting a new manager? That's up to you." The other, like you, but I also said like you can't force me not to manage Jaren and Dizzy if if they want still want to if they still want to work <clears> for me then that's that's yeah. just how it's gonna mm -hmm. be yeah yeah and then I said it, Funk Volume Fitness is staying and then so is my brother like okay. these demands now, are ridiculous now, now um the um Funk Volume Fitness thing I mean I, I did say that. And I know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Whether you resisted on that, I actually think it's good that you resisted because fitness is very important, and it was, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a great thing. It should have stayed. The management thing, I don't think I would have said that unless the other guys had like co-signed it prior or co-signed the idea. So, um, but what, but yeah. So I don't think I would have forced them to get new managers. So I, I know that we've had conversations where they. Hey, we all came to agreement that that that's what that's something we needed, but I don't remember exactly how the email was worded. <coughs> but um, but I did. I'm it sounded like something I did say. As far as the Swizz thing, I don't want to go into Swizz with details, right. but um, I will just say the the reason I felt that, just in case anyone's wondering, I did say that is because I felt like he was inactive. Right. He you didn't feel like it. He was inactive. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So, so that that was why. So that wasn't me trying to be a uh, a dickhead or anything. He was. I just feel like he was inactive, and yeah, there was no reason to to for him to exist there in that same way that he was, if he was inactive. Right. But we don't need to. All right, we we can move. So, um, so yeah. So I, <clears throat> I I was you had those you had those demands. I said no, and then you were like, you know, it very much started started splitting ways from there. Um. And then you guys came back off the road, and, and then we had a conversation early January on the phone with the whole team. Yeah, mm -hmm. we thought, I remember that. We thought we were going to sort it out. Yes, we were working on it. Um, and now, then this is where that my my ego got my ego got involved because it seemed like we were about to bring things back together, but then you said you told me there were other things being said, but then you said. Well, you you shouldn't be telling me I don't work hard. Or you told me what I yeah. what I should and shouldn't say. <laughs> and I was like, well, what? you don't. And, and I said, well, you don't. And one more time, and then that was a wrap. That was, it was a wrap right there. And, and I remember specifically because I told Dizzy. And I don't know if Dizzy had talked to you prior before that call. I remember I was like, man, if he says I don't work hard one more time, I'm done. Like right. because those that that really like I just felt like yo, like, I like what the hell? So when we got on that call, I was confident that you were not gonna say that. I I I thought like it had been brought to everyone's awareness. Let's not say these words because this is gonna cause a volcanic yeah. eruption. Yeah, no, and it did. But I I've all I always just you know I got I got you know I got brothers I got frat brothers mm -hmm. we. 
we call each other nay. We let it. We, I mean, literally in my fraternity, we have something called a let it be broke session. And that is when you say what you have to say, no matter how it comes out. So that yeah. that's and 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 normally, you know, I'm 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 a pretty reserved cat. I can control, you know, but yeah, you were getting on my nerves in that call. Like at some point, you know, I think the expectation was always like, Dame, you gotta control this and you gotta be measured and you gotta, you know, but I'm human too, right? Like you are, I, got, you are. I have a I have a I have an ego as well that I try to, you know, everybody should be trying to control their ego and minimize it and what have yeah. you. But at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm a human too, and you're gonna and that, say things that that trigger me. Um, and that was a class that moment. I mean, yeah, was ego, and then I hit back with the ego as well. I hit right. back, and I yeah, because I I I remember going into that call just thinking like, this is gonna be cool. I just uh, you know I have my request and preferences of things that I want that I will express. But yeah, at, at that moment when you said that, I actually couldn't believe. It. I was like, did this motherfucker. I told this motherfucker not to say, and I and I even I was like, you you guys heard him say this. I told you that, and I was I was so like, no way, this man just said this. So I'm like, oh, it's a rap rap. It's like that's in my head. I just knew right there. I think I hung up on the phone call, and I just knew with it. I I put the setting on funk volume is done and i just turned the switch on of like i give no fucks and and it went downhill from there right i wanted to make it known and i think the way i also wanted to make it known to hit back at you because that was so i felt so disrespected i i know i took it i went public with it real fast and i know right I, after the call right because i wanted to set it in stone because i knew that if I made that post, it was gonna make everybody wonder what's happening. And I knew that I, in my head, I'm like, you better not be a bitch and pull out. You better, and I was like, I'm not. We hold that. We gonna hold that firmly till this, all this blood drain out of this, of this whole shit. So <coughs> that's exactly what I did. I mean, and obviously I've known you for, for a while and I've seen you do the, the similar things to other people like you know and what you see somebody do to somebody else you yeah. better believe that no it's gonna that, happen that, to you no you're can, right and I, yeah that they have the, at least the capacity to do it to you so i'm not completely naive but like the fact that like i can't no matter how it's told right and it, and it me saying you don't work we already explained what what yeah where that comes from and i get what it, it means, and I, I understand but it like in my world we should be able to to say that to each like we should be able to we should be able to like especially with as much as we have been through and how much work we put in not that we ever fought but like even if we fought like we should be able to come back and like no you're right because but it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't really nothing that wrong with what we were <clears throat> doing like we were in a great place i agree um go ahead you about to say something <laughs> um what was I about to say? Uh, yeah, no, you're you're right. It was it it wasn't wrong, and we should have like we should have been able to get through it. I think, but I don't think at that. I mean, I know we didn't. Maybe if it was like you and Swizz, you guys would have been able because, of course, you guys are actually brothers, and I'm I'm, you know, I've, but I've been around you guys for a long time, or you specifically. Um, I it didn't come off as something that I was interested in like just taking a, a a brotherly love jab just like ah you don't worry and then i'm gonna get over it because i it and artists are sensitive are I'm, I'm very sensitive as an artist even like i can re i can remember comments that people said at random times and random shows in fucking wisconsin at fucking 7 42 p.m when a dude said a thing that didn't even matter to my life and i'm like damn he said that that lyric was not as good as he thought it was gonna be and until this day I'm like, this is just some motherfucker. Finally, remember he said that, and I remember these things, and they eat me alive when someone picks at my craft, and because it makes me insecure, because my music and everything is like really. I mean, it's not all I have, but at the time, it it, it really feels like all you have, and that's all you know. And then when someone just kind of downplays the work ethic or whatever, it hurts a lot more. So it's very offensive, and. 
I probably wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it. If you said that today, or if we had everything going on, I probably would have, I think I would have expressed to you that it hurt me in a more genuine way, like an actual real phone call instead of me going, don't say that, what the fuck, you don't know what you think. I would have actually just said like, yo, when you say that, it actually hurts me and it makes me feel like insecure about my craft and maybe if you, whatever you meant by that, if you could just, you know, elaborate on it more so I can understand what you mean because it's coming off this way and I don't want to do anything or react in, in the wrong way. I would have explained it in more of a, you know what I'm saying? But back then I didn't, I was just like, oh, that's how you feel? Okay, fuck it, fuck it. And then it, it, I was just hitting you with that, with that, that same energy that, you know, you had delivered when you said so, those words. So it was, a, so, you know, obviously <coughs> just telling the story about the 2015 tour, you know, how, how this negative energy got built up of like, you know, not, not agreeing with the Warner deal, not, not being in the place you, you feel like you should be, you know, the tour not going as expected, then you seeing what I'm being paid, you not understanding why I'm paying, getting paid that much. Yeah. And then me telling you, you know, you don't work that hard. It's just a, it's just a, it all, no, it, it was just, all built it yeah. builds up yeah. to a point where you're just like, you know, you see it as an opportunity. It, it was was it an opportunity to like okay, blow this up and then purposely get some publicity no, off, no, be, off no, of the blow up. No, no, no. Here, here's the thing. I once I got the hang of like how my career was working, I never felt the need to ever like expose one of my loved ones around me to get some fame because I knew other ways to do that. Like I, I felt like I, I feel like I got ideas for days and days, years and years on, on things that in that category of what I would use to help me blow up. But it's not things that it will, that are under the category of trying to be famous to expose. I would never sacrifice a relationship for fame. Now, if it was a petty one, like a guy at a gas station who fucking popped my tire, I'll probably make a song about his punk ass. And then, I, cause I don't care about him. He don't know me, I don't know, know him. And it'll be funny, it'll be a funny thing or whatever, I don't know. But if, but yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't plan this. I wasn't just like, ooh, that'll be good. Because that's, that's like sinister thoughts. I don't, right. I didn't, that's I didn't. How, but that's how I received because <coughs> especially the, the, the tone of the, I mean, <clears throat> being the subject of a diss is ridiculous to me, but like your, but the story of the story of the song that you put out mm -hmm. was that essentially that I was crooked and shady and stealing, but that's it, not, that's not the story we just told. No. Okay. Let me, let me break that down. So everything that I felt, the, the perspective that I had from 2015 or from the entire funk volume, like I said, my me, me not being interested in understanding business the way that I should have. Those little gray areas of me maybe going, it's okay, Dame, I trust you to do it, it's all good. And that eventually taking its toll and me maybe potentially even playing myself in, in some ways going, now I don't understand the business and I left it off to him and now I'm getting mad over this. So I will take accountability for me not understanding certain things, but when it comes down, I guess let's let's say the diss song, when I was so mad, I like I was extremely mad. And I know we were going through le a legal battle as well with things of just percentages and all that, which was really, really making me upset in ways because I'm not upset more, anymore more at all. More stuff you didn't understand probably. <laughs> and it could have been, it could have been that. But it was just, um, and, and let me, I wanna put this out there. I think in, this is why it's important to understand numbers and everything because it's 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 it feels cool and comfortable when it's small numbers like oh 100 bucks here's 20 you know i get whatever and then everything's good you get you get 30 whatever and everything's but when that when those numbers get to once it's past a hundred thousand dollars or once it, you know it gets into the three hundred thousands five hundred thousands or higher that's when you're going to wish you had have learned. Bit. I'm speaking to people, not you, of course. You, But this is when you're going to wish you had have learned it and you're putting yourself in a position to be but, uncomfortable. But, if, but but my thing is, is if you're in, you know, manager, I'm going to speak for all managers. Okay, go ahead. Because right like, managers have a pretty, what I think is a sometimes very shitty, stressful job. Yeah. Right? So 
you know, they signed up to get a certain percentage. And mm-hmm. and to be honest, in a lot of the good managers that I know, I think they deserve way more than what they get, right? So you can't, as an artist, like they're in it. They're you are essentially partners. They're in it to hopefully <coughs> get the millions and millions of dollars, yeah. right? You can't, and they're a part of that. So mm-hmm. you can't at at a certain point be like, oh, okay, twenty percent. That's that's too much now. Because, no, you're right. No, you're right. You, that, pull, that's not pull, pull, pulling out once it starts crossing over into half a million or whatever. We should no. be happy that we that we we've gotten to a you, point where we can live you, comfortably and provide for our family. You're because right. For now, a lot of managers, twenty percent ain't shit until you get. No, and they until, putting until in hell it starts, of work too. No, you're right. And so there's two two things that I want to go into just dealing with the the timeline of where we're at. So one, like I never really understood the finances, even though they may have been, you know, we've had certain meetings, but I've never I I don't recall ever really, really understanding. And that and that's my fault for not like really making it a priority. In in as a businessman in my career, or whatever, I just wanted to rap. And yeah, and I left it all up to you. But me, not, I, I had no interest in fully, fully understanding the numbers, and which resulted in me not even knowing how much I made. Or like if you had to ask me in 2015, how much did you make in 2014 with you, or how much you got, I would have said, I don't know. You gotta ask Dame. Or and no, but that no, but that but that's you, not you just asked your 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 business or, or the account or the yeah yeah sorry yeah but I, I, but, I did I wasn't like the keeper no you didn't you didn't like, you didn't you didn't know my chase account you didn't right. yeah you didn't know you're right but um but I would have just said I don't know what the this I I just didn't know because I just knew we were making money so I was just cool with making money because I wasn't broke no more um and then yeah and and as time went on you know I just I I just started to ask little questions that became more curious but I just didn't understand the business. Of or my financial situation too well at all. Now with the with the disc that came out <coughs> and um the whatever I said in the song, you gotta understand. So there's a few angles that maybe you you're not seeing it from because you may wonder, oh, what's this? Or what is it, what is going on? Okay. I'm a rapper. I grew up off of like just aggressive rap. The idea of disrespecting it, it, it somebody is, let's just say if, if you do one little thing, it's to put a, a spotlight on that one little thing, even if it's not even fully justifiable in every way, and it's to bring out every negative energy to of, of humiliation in that thing. But this has some, been something I've, like, I know you're aware of because this is just the the hops and method typically when it came to attacking something, but but I, but, I, but number one, I'm not a rapper. No, but and but num- but, and, but number two, your fans don't understand that. Your your fans still go at me to this day <coughs> about how I stole from you and how I'm a crook and how I need to die. And that and that's very like, very wrong. And I'm very sorry that I put you in that situation. And if there's any fans out there doing that, please stop because as you can see. There were flaws in the way that I was structured at that time when I delivered that message. And I felt passionate about what I said when I said it, but I wouldn't necessarily do that today. If 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 that whole situation panned out, I would probably just go, it is what it is. Let, let's just part ways. But I want I I I really want people to know like our business was ran extremely fairly. Like more so than because I modeled it off of what I learned about other labels and I one upped it. Yeah. Right. And I and we did things for you and we did things for Jaron and Dizzy that labels typically wouldn't, you know, even just the I mean, we actually cared for each other. So the people we put around, <coughs> you know, making sure you have health insurance, like making sure you set up your retirement account. Like yeah. This is the, the, not stuff that's done at a regular label. The the main issue, and I'm going to continue to um, state this, is the lack of understanding business. That I mean, that that's that's, that's that's what it is. So, um, if I would go, could go back in time, I would just tell myself, pick up a fucking book or go sit in the accountant's office or you and Dame sit down and you really read this shit of what's going on and make sure you're comfortable with it. Because if you're not comfortable with it, 
your mind's going to start to wonder. And then when those big numbers come in and you see those splits start happening, you're going to naturally instinctually want to attack. Right. You're going to, and, and you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to find it offensive by, uh, you know, whoever the manager is or whatever person is getting the percentage that they're getting. And if it's, you know, you're, you're cool with it when it's, you know, $20 or $200, but when it turns to 200,000 or 500,000, you're going to go hold on. And then that, so that, so like, I'm, like I said, I, I just think the thing that was missing in funk volume was just, uh, just us as, as the artists, not not you specifically, but I'm just saying as the artist is us knowing the business. And I think maybe I don't want to fully put this on you, but maybe or someone of the business world who saw us and knowing because I know now, like when I see other artists, I'm like, you don't know shit about shit. Wow. You may have got a million views on this, but I know you don't know shit because I know a handful of rappers who got. 10 million views getting and you know they're getting number you know they're getting their albums on itunes and shit and in, in the top five top 10 and they don't know anything and i'm like that was me right. and they, they're they hitting me up asking questions like yo what are you doing this and i'm like damn this is exactly how i was and they feel confused and they're like yo i feel like my manager's doing this and that i don't know and i and i get it but this is why as i mean us being through it, which, you know, um, me being the artist specifically, but you witnessing it and knowing that I'm an artist who had flipped out from not understanding certain things, it should be a priority amongst all labels to go, if you're going to sign, you need to take this quick little course or sit down with so-and-so so we can explain because, <coughs> excuse me, but yeah, so it's because, it, yeah, I feel like a lot of artists probably flip out over this. And, you know, even when you think of Whatever, when Ice Cube made or made the diss song to who did he, what the with the NWA shit or whatever or whatever splits, I wonder if there's a I wonder how Cube would feel about that right now. I wonder if he would just be like, yeah, fuck it, I you know they screwed me or, or would he be able to break it down? Going, it's my fault. I didn't ask no questions. We was right. all just some kids trying to make it, and then we got mad with it. That and I think that's what it what it was a case of. So I think that I think that one I. I I mean, I couldn't really make you guys do much. So I could say, yeah, I should have made you guys learn the business, but I don't know how affected that would have been. But I guess, you know, just going forward, like with artists, I, don't, I would just won't even work with artists that aren't interested yeah, in the business. It's, the it's other crucial. thing that I feel like I could have done was brought in like a number two, like a like somebody that, that knew the business, but that was separate from me. I feel like you guys needed another voice other than me like a, another voice of authority other than me because it was like oh it's dame again like if yeah like if there was another person that was like a vice president or whatever and mm -hmm. and that was with you guys not that could have been like a voice of reason amongst the bash dame session to like throw at least throw in like a, yeah a, yeah an alternative idea that you guys respected i feel like maybe that could have you know maybe that could have been helpful yeah yeah it, and it i'm sure i'm sure it would have and could have. And, you know, unfortunately we didn't have that, but you know, um, you know, we, we live and we learn. And, you know, I, I made a lot of mistakes of, you know, reacting out of emotion or out of impulse and, and yeah, man, it, it, I was, I was a different person and I'm not, I'm not just going to dump it on the old me. Like I take accountability for it. I was a grown man. I was, you know, in my thirties already doing this. So, yeah, but I, but I but even then, you know, it doesn't it, it just goes to show that you can you can be in your 30s and still be like ignorant in certain areas. You have certain pockets where you need to grow in and understand things. But yeah, the business side is crucial. And I and I um always remember the, this Dr. Dre line in the song called What's the Difference where he said the the business end of this shit can turn your friends against you. I wish he had to say <laughs> learn the business or else you're going to put your or you know, you'll being a you you got a higher chance of falling out with your friends if you guys don't know it so right. it's crucial that all parties involved in everything know it and as a just as a as a man in general as a, as an adult any business that you do speaking in general any business that you do with anybody you need to really understand what the hell you're getting into you can't just leave it in somebody else's hands and it is important and you're going to learn eventually through mistakes, through somebody taking 
a large chunk of money that you don't understand why, whatever, you're going to learn eventually, but make it a priority to learn because you're not going to be in a primal situation in your career, financially, in whatever business you do. If you're not able to go, hold on, what is that? Why is that? How is that? And how, whatever, if you can't ask those questions that you're just leaving it up to so-and-so, you're going to end up possibly corrupting yourself or your situation or that friendship you have with the person you started something with. So yeah, man, business learning it is, is, is so important. Yeah. I, I wish I knew that I, I really didn't prioritize it. No. And that led to... <coughs> so, I, I mean, I definitely appreciate you know, I appreciate the the phone call back in December and the conversation that we had because this is, you know, a lot of this is just, you know, rehashing that conversation. Nothing, yeah, like, yeah. nothing that you're saying today is new to me. I just appreciate you having the conversation because um, it was, it was, it was definitely rough for me for probably like two years, like two years after that. <clears throat> yeah, like because. You know, I thought I was gonna be working on Funk Volume forever. Like I was, I was proud of what we were doing. I felt like we only reached like twenty percent of our potential. Yeah, yeah. I knew we was about to be, you know, out of there in the next year or two if we did if we did the right things. Yeah. Um, you know, and it it put me in a deep, it put me in a darker place than I than I knew at the time. Like a lot of times <laughs> when you're in a when you're in a state of, I don't know, know if it was depression, but if, when you're in a dark place. You typically you sometimes don't know until you're out of it, and then you look yeah. back and you're like, oh shit, like I was. Uh -huh. I, I know, I, I know was, that I is. was in the dark space, but you know the fact that Funk Volume and it got taken away so fast because it wasn't like December. I wasn't thinking about not being a part of Funk Volume. Yeah, yeah, and I I wasn't either. It was, sure. yeah, it it is just. I mean, honestly, that whole situation, the the specific falling out and that phone call and everything, I think it was just a clash of egos and neither of us were willing to take the high road in certain moments that one of us may have needed to to because yeah it, it and and me of course um <clears throat> i mean just being the the aggressive traumatized rapper that i am with over you know it, it it led me to do the things that i did after funk volume ended and you know i'm and i genuinely apologize I wouldn't do that today. I don't think that sacrificing a brotherhood, a friendship, you know, over this, like, I don't think the pettiness was worth the, the sacrificing that. I wouldn't wow. do that. I would, if anything, worst case scenario, I would have just said, man, you guys just don't, don't talk for a month and just and then, and then talk again in February right, or right. some shit or whatever. I, I, I wish, you know, <clears throat> it didn't end that way. I have learned a lot since then about myself, and I do believe that, you know, because I went through a dark time as well. My whole life fell apart in 2016 in ways that, that I'm still recovering from where I've been in such low points where that little thing I said to you whenever I said it about whatever, that that got intensified of my zero, the the amount of fucks that I um <clears throat> wouldn't give, you know, and, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of that place now. I can I can see the old me clearly now, and I'm 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 just picking myself apart every day to try to be a better person and to just you know um just spread good energy and and be transparent with the you know issues that I've had in the past that people may have glorified and and they may have said I want to be like him or what he did when he made that song about Dame or whoever else and I'm letting them know like there's no situation in life where you could ever bash somebody or say foul things about them, especially in the way that I did, where in the long run, you're gonna, it's gonna sit peacefully in your gut. It's gonna be like, oh shit, like what? Like as you mature, you're gonna look back and wish you had, a, you know, taken a more positive route. And I wish that I did. And I know like I have a, I, I feel I do have an, a, a way to make things make my struggles and make my my pain and my traumas feel like socially acceptable. Where people see me in the courtroom and they're like, yeah, whatever, oh, he going through that, that's fucked up, me too. And really it hurt deep down because I didn't want to go through that. And I, I didn't like it, but I knew that that was a way for me to paint myself as like, I'm this cool Mr. Ilmana Hobson and look, look, at, look at how I'm about to play it off like it's nothing. I don't give a fuck. But really I did give a fuck. And 
And but you know what the universe taught me my lesson in other ways. It may not have happened the same way you did, I, but it 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 taught me because I had an ego that I didn't know I had. I had a problem with hurting people when they when they hurt me. I felt like I had to get them back. I felt like if someone did something to me, I had to actually hurt you back and hurt you worse in whatever way that was. Not necessarily physically, but you know, I, and that and that's what I. I was under, that's what I felt like at the time that I was trying to do to you was hurt you back and hurt you worse than, you know, whatever I was hurt by that you had said or done to me. And yeah. And I, and I'm, I really am sorry for it. I don't, I don't condone that type of energy anymore. I wouldn't do it now. I wouldn't recommend my kid doing that. And I wouldn't recommend anybody out there going about things the way that I did. But at the same time, being an artist, there is a beauty in the ignorance and in 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 artists because the it's hard to be smart and ill at the same time. I mean, you can, <laughs> but like you like the, a lot of a lot of like <clears throat> it's hard. To, it's hard to really like. There's a beauty in a, in an artist who just like I don't give a fuck about shit, nigga. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Fuck me, because then that's the the music is just like it's hitting different. But then sometimes I think like, yo, how I'm learning to do that now where I'm like, how can I be a version of Hobson that, you know, still comes off with the same type of energy that people have have loved in the past, but still keep my intelligence and my and integrity and, and not lose respect from loved ones around me or people around me and sacrifice relationships. And yeah, and, and, and you know that that's something for me in the universe to figure out, which I will figure the, out that formula. But yeah, I've learned. Like I said, I'm I'm sorry. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that now. And um, yeah, it it, it was just a it was just a, a a time in my life where that's how I felt I needed to resolve things. No, it's a, again. I I appreciate the apology. I accept the apology. Uh, Thank you. Your fans are wild though. No, they are, and like, and... <laughs> yeah, and like I said, to all my fans, if you have anything against Dame, he he's a good guy. He's never like like he never done anything like fucked up in a, in a way where he's tried to sabotage. Like he just he's always had good intent. That and that's why I called him last December because I I was so confused and I needed a perspective, an outside perspective on myself because I knew that he always did have a uh he he always cared. He did always care, and yeah, and, that, and that, that was one of the reasons why I called him. And with the whole Funk Volume Fitness, you know, you had good intentions. He used to try to bring us all together. You had, um, when we did the retreat, you you had good intentions with everything. The, the fitness thing is important because we're, I mean, everybody aside from Swiss is unhealthy. And I, I just now got into fitness, like, understanding. I'm like, oh, so you were low-key ahead of your time. You were, you were ahead. The only thing I will say that I think why it didn't like resonate with us too well or me specifically, we were different people and I felt like we didn't walk the same path. So I felt like we didn't relate to each other. So when you right. said certain things, I'll be like, you're not my type of, like you're not, you're, you don't come from where I come from and it's from the lead and you don't get things from the way that I do. So I felt like we weren't seeing through the same scope and that, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think when it comes to relaying a message or, or telling somebody something, Sometimes, like, let's just say if if you were to talk about some like someone better in their life, you, you could have a let's just say you had a point next to do going, hey, you um thug on the street. You need to stop. You need to put the guns down and get your shit together. He's going to be like, man, who the fuck? But if you have a, a dude from the streets who's like, hey, man, come here, bro. Nigga, like I used to be so just I, like so you. I'm the point dexter. In no, <laughs> that's what that's what this is. <laughs> I mean, I got, yes. we, got, we got your point. No. Right, we got your point. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I I will I will say that I did. You know, <laughs> what I felt. You know, especially being an I wasn't I wasn't an artist, but I was an owner in the label, and I did I did put my imprint on the label, and I felt justifiably so in in being able to do that. But I don't feel like I did it. You know, I, I don't feel like I did anything without checking in with you. And, you know, but I, I felt like I could. Like, I, I invested into this. I worked for this. Like, you know, I want to yeah. do, do some stuff I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And, no, I I, and I feel like it'll be good for the brand, like, overall, like, and, longer term. 
Yeah, no, you're right. Like, how could you be mad at community service? No, like, no, shit. you are right. I'm letting you know with a lot of the things you said and and you tried to get us to do, you were ahead of. I just you, couldn't. You were, I just, you were ahead I just of, couldn't. You, I just couldn't relate it to y'all. I couldn't. Yes. I we were some, we some thug niggas, you know what I'm <laughs> no, saying? No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so what, you know, just to kind of, you know, bring this full circle, you know, now that you have a label and there's no artist though, Sai, right? No, no artist because like, every Why time I think about signing one, I'm just like, <laughs> man, I fucked that shit. <laughs> like, that's a head. I, I don't know what to, like, I yeah. Part, yeah, part of me feels like signing and it's like a, a slave thing and it's like i don't want to take from an artist but then i'm like how can i do it but we we we, we me and jamie have found some ways to contribute to 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 help artists we haven't moved on it yet but we've mm -hmm. been coming up with ideas but so far it's just been me just doing my own thing okay Dope. <coughs> and then just just going forward just with other business and stuff what, what other stuff are you into um right now i'm just about self-healing I'm just about, you know, um uh, you know, I'm I'm I've made it a priority to call people that I haven't talked to in a long time and apologize for anything that I that I'm aware of that I may have done wrong to them and and just let them know that I'm sorry and that, and I know it seems like such a weird thing but it's it's a priority in my life because the the issues that I've carried from my childhood all the way into my adulthood have affected me in ways and I didn't know that it was affecting me. And it was, um, and it and it may have sabotaged certain relationships around me that I may not have even been aware of, whatever, but I just wanna be kind to everybody and and yeah, and just show love to everybody and and not be what I was. And I know I'm not saying I was a monster. I'm not I know I wasn't a monster in that way, but I know. The monster you that was always in me. had no, yeah. You you <clears throat> always I, I knew at your core like you had a good heart, like you had good intentions. I don't think you knew. I don't think you knew how to receive love. I don't think you knew. Uh, you just weren't used. To, you just weren't used to. To just what we tried to surround you with. No, I I wasn't. I I I wasn't, and. And that definitely, you know, stemmed from things from my past where, you know, whatever went on in my household and it just conditioned me to be a certain way, which I'm still trying to, you know, correct those things. And and I'm, and this is why I'm just always working on myself now instead of pointing the finger at everybody else, because I know that, you know, I, I have a lot of work to do on myself and I, and I'm only in control of me. So yeah, I, I didn't Swiss, and I know Swizz has always told me that he he's even before Funk Volume even blew up, before I even blew up as an artist, he would just tell me that I yeah like I never had like brothers around me to who give a certain love and I didn't know how to receive it. And he would tell me that, and I at the time I didn't really know what he meant. I thought he's just like overanalyzing, but he was absolutely right. And Swizz has always been around like lovable people in his environment, people who cared and he's had good relationships with his friends and all that. And I was like the solo dude in the dungeon, just like I was rapping for revenge. Like I'm gonna get everybody back. I'm gonna, everybody who fucked me over, who did this, I'm gonna make sure they all see me and they gonna see how dope I am, how great I am and how much money I make and how much cooler my life is than theirs. And that is not the way you should approach anything. I remember, I remember. Before, I know what you go, let the Lamborghini <laughs> stuff. <laughs> tell it, tell I, it, please. I, I remember before we, before we had really any success, you were like, Dame, when we make it, I'm going a, I'm to a buy a green Lamborghini. I'm going to go to the Northridge Mall and I'm just going to park outside. And then I just looked at you like. Why would you do that? Like, what kind of? But it it, it started to make sense just in terms of understanding <laughs> your history. Um, I thought it was gonna make me happy. I thought it was I was gonna be flossing and flexing on everybody. And you know what? I did that, and I felt stupid as fuck. <laughs> I did exactly that. I felt stupid as fuck for like for a lot of reasons. Oh man, I played myself. That Lamborghini's bullshit. It was a, it was a, it was a stupid investment. And it's not an investment. It's not an investment. <laughs> That's a dumb. That's you me got trying. Rid of that's it? me. No, I didn't. I still uh, got it, man. And uh, the inner nigga in me is is forcing me to keep it. I can't get rid of the Lambo. That's a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I ain't never won no Grammy. That's my uh, trophy. That's to let them know. Yeah, 
I'm the real deal, but that's all ego talking. I really don't care about the lamp. Honestly, like I'm gonna get rid of it, but I just I just joke with all that shit. But yeah, it's um it's it's really bullshit though. Like it's is I, I hope everyone buys one so they can realize that they've been idiots the entire time by thinking that that was gonna make them happy or make them cooler because it really doesn't. Like uh, I'd rather like a Honda is way more comfortable. No, well, man, we can we can we can wrap this up I, again. I can't say it enough. I, I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate you reaching out last December. Um, you know, yeah, I I don't I don't I don't know what happens from here, but you know, I definitely you know it seems like you you still doing pretty well. You know, just musically, I, I hope that that continues to. I mean, I mean, the bars is real. You know, what I'm saying the bars they <laughs> never go fade. You know what I'm saying? That's just you know that's. That's yeah. just that's just nature taking its course, you know. Right, right. Nah, okay. but yeah, nah. Um, yeah, but nah. Thank you. I'm I'm glad we had this talk as well. And yeah, it's um, yeah, just mainly for us and and just so to be transparent, so everyone knows. And yeah, and I guess everybody to sum everything up. Pretty much, Hops has been fucked up this entire time. I never knew what the fuck I was talking about. Had so many traumas. Who knew that I had all these issues the entire fucking time? It's been me. Good God. And now, you know what? I'm taking accountability for it. Um, here right now, and I'm being a man, and I can honestly say now that, yeah, I was that, a lunatic. But, that, but that's but that's huge, man. Like, I, I don't feel like, you know, I think there's, hopefully there are other people watch this that, and, and feel the same urge to, you know, do something similar and, and, and mend some of the relationships that they've broken in the past, because, you know, you're definitely not the only one. Um... <laughs> you know, I think a lot of cats have have some healing to do. Yeah, um, no, they they do. Er everybody does in certain ways. You know, yeah. it may not be in the same way that I need healing, but every, every everybody needs therapy. I think e everybody, unless your parents are therapists, <laughs> yeah, I feel like everybody could use somebody to talk to. That's what that's what I've learned. Everybody got some sh something going on in their life that makes them uncomfortable and they don't know how to deal with it. And yeah, that's why I'm I'm I love therapy now. I know I love it. I'll be telling everybody. I'll be seeing people where I tell them like, yo, get in therapy. And they like, man, what the fuck? Then I'm like, damn, that's probably how you view me back then. I'm like, I'm but I always go, you know what? I ain't even gonna say it no more. The universe gonna teach your ass. Keep on doing that bullshit you do. It's, Watch what the fuck gonna happen. It's become I I I I've, I've been happy to see it become more like just normal to even talk about therapy. I mean, Charlemagne addresses it all the time. Mm -hmm. I think it's it. I've just seen it come up in a lot of conversations with the <clears throat> artists that that um you know I talk to through the Music Entrepreneur Club. So yeah, cool man. Any 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 other questions for me or anything before we um, wrap this up? Or are we straight? No, nah, I'm I'm good, man. I'm good on everything. I'm just glad we got to sit down and have this chat. So yeah, it's all love. Every everything's good on my end. Indeed. All right. All right. All right. We out.